Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back once again to another episode of a Stonewall's Perspective podcast. I am your host, Alexander Stone. We are on a mission to spread the light of the gospel into every aspect of life. In this episode, we have another very special guest with us. I met him at one of Clay Clark's events, the Reawaken America tour back in Colorado in September. Um, and so this, this guest, he is a pastor. Uh, he's the senior pastor of Eternal Word Church. Please welcome my friend, Pastor Philip Smith. How are you doing today? Doing very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Alex. Thank you for being on this episode. So we are going to be talking about faith, kind of why faith isn't existent in the church today, what faith is, and, and how to get back to a mindset of faith. But before we do that, uh, Pastor Philip, could we just hear about, about you, who you are, uh, where you come from, how you came to know the Lord, and, and, and everything there? Yes, I'd be happy to tell you about that. I was uh, born in Muskegon, Michigan. Uh, I am one of uh, six siblings, and uh, I'm the number two. I grew up in a Christian family, and we attended church pretty much uh, every Sunday and Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> and uh, so we went to church a lot. But uh, we, and so at a very early age, I, I um, in a Sunday morning service, I, I received Christ as my Lord and, uh, and was baptized in water. And, uh, and about seven years later, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And, um, and then we um, just uh, done a lot of different things over the years. We, we were inv got involved in church and uh, sang in the choir and ushered and various things like that and end up being a trustee and so on and so forth. I finally, I met my uh, wife Bernadette at a church convention in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, that was in October of uh, 1989, and we were married in November of 1990, and uh, to that union we have eight children, and so that's uh, pretty much, but uh, just uh, love the Lord all my life, and um, you know, well, all my saved life, I'll say anyway. <laughs> Uh, praise the Lord and uh, mm -hmm. and so on. But that's that's basically what we the, the gist of what, uh, you know, without getting into taking up a lot of the time <laughs> that we have here. Uh, my, my story in a nutshell. That's awesome. And, and, you know, so it says on your website, eternalwordchurch.org, that your core values are love, faith, righteousness, acceptance and forgiveness. And these are these are core values that every Christian should have. And, and, and in meeting you and being friends with you, I can see all of those core values just exuding from you, just the way that you present yourself, the way that you talk, the way that you, that you, that you worship. And I think that is something that every Christian uh, should have love, faith, righteousness, acceptance, and forgiveness. Yet it seems as if many Christians fall short of that from, from having those core values, but you, you do have those. And I think that's, that's truly amazing. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we, uh, and uh, as you know, it's always a work in project, <laughs> you know, in progress, I should say, a work in progress. And uh, we have to keep the switch of faith turned on and keep on acting on the things that we know are true in the word of God. And that will help us to get there where we can actually live and walk by faith because you can't walk by faith unless you walk in love because faith works by love. Mm -hmm. So it's vitally important that we walk in the God kind of love. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. So, uh, so for my listeners, when we were talking yesterday on the phone about this episode, I asked him, Hey, what are your, your favorite things to talk about? And he said faith. And, and I thought it was really cool because that night I have my Monday night Bible study with, with a bunch of friends of mine. And the speaker at my Bible study was talking about faith and, and what faith looks like. And one of the things that he brought up is the, the fact that it says in the word of God that it, without faith, it is impossible to please Christ. And, and that's exactly right. And, and there are many people who will go and do something for Christ, quote unquote, but they're not doing it in faith. They're doing it in, in vain. 
And that's a problem that many people in the church to have have. And so I'm going to ask you, uh, Pastor Philip, why is that? Why do people do these works, but don't do them in faith? Uh, I think uh, sometimes it's because of ignorance and uh, not being taught uh, what faith is, uh, how faith comes, how faith works and uh, so on and as a result they're they're doing works they're doing works and by their works they're trying to be justified in the sight of the lord in many respects i think is what possibly happens but you know the word of god does say without faith it's impossible to please god he that comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you know it, it's it's very important that we have a relationship with Almighty God, it's very important that we know Him personally and have that relationship with Him. And as we do, it's going to help us to uh, walk by faith. The greater your relationship is with Him, the greater capacity that you're going to have to walk by faith. And faith, of course, as Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so a lot of times people try to do things because in a religious fashion and not in a faith fashion. And so religious responsibilities, religious duties, and all those kind of things. And that not that they're necessarily bad to do those things. It's just that whatever you do in word or deed, you want to do it by faith. You know, and how do you do it by faith? You know, you might ask, how? How do you do these things by faith? Well, anything that's going to be done by faith is going to have scriptures with it. You're going to have to have scriptures. Okay? Uh you know, the Word of God makes it very clear that, uh, you know, that faith comes by hearing the Word of God. So if, you not hear, if you're not hearing the Word of God, then you're not going to have uh, faith. Faith comes by hearing. And not having heard, it comes by hearing. It's what you're hearing right now that's going to allow you to walk by faith. You know, and faith is the opposite of fear. You know, when we walk by faith, we're not walking by sight. We're not walking by what we can see with our eyes, what we can feel with our hands or all, anything. It's not even, uh, it's really, it's spiritual. It's not, it's not just a physical, it's not a physical thing. But it, what will happen is, as we walk by faith, we'll bring the things uh, out of the spiritual reality into the realm of the reality that we, the physical reality that we live in. And that's, that's really good. One of the things that, many people have problems in is, is the way that they walk out their faith, that there are, uh, that, that people's lives are like a key. So on a key, like I'm holding up right here on video, there are, there are high moments and there are low moments. There are, there are hills and there are valleys that all of us go through. And many times people in those hills, they, uh, in, excuse me, in those valleys, they really just lose their faith. They, they are living a life of sorrow and sadness and, and, and pain because they're not relying on God. They're not focusing on God. They're not putting their faith in God. And, and, and faith is believing what God's word has said, that he will complete a good work into, in, inside of you until the day that you die, until the day that you're gone. And many Christians have a problem of, of believing what God has said in his word. So, so what can Christians do to really start to believe and have faith in God's word, Pastor Philip? I would say that one of the greatest things that any, any Christian can do to learn to live and walk by faith is study and meditate on the word of God day and night. The Bible talks about it in Joshua 1, 8, 9. It talks about it in uh, Psalms 1. Uh, that if you'll meditate on the word of God, that you'll, you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. And it talks about, uh, you know, uh, you and everything you do will prosper. Okay. You can't prosper apart from God and God. In fact, God in, in the, in first John chapter one, it talks about in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. And then you drop down to verse 14 and it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. But I believe that if we act on the word, because faith is an action, it's an act. It's not just a uh, mental, it's not just mental assent. It's actually acting on what the word of God says. 
And when we are, you know, uh, I like what uh, Brother Keith Moore says oftentimes, it says, uh, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I am a doer of the word of God. And as we are doers of the word of God, you're going to you're going to be happier. You're going to get through the tests and trials of life that come your way a whole lot better. Uh, the, the more you practice the word of God, the easier it's going to become. It doesn't mean that the life's challenges are going to become easier. It's just that you're going to have the capacity to face them and go through them and walk through them without fear and without being ashamed or being down, cast down or depressed. Because it's not God's will for his children to be depressed, you know. I mean, you, you're talking to your your friends and you say, well, I'm so down, I'm so depressed. Oh, why don't you come and be a Christian just like me? <laughs> oh, no, they're going to run from that. And they say, no, thank you. Uh, I, I think I'll, I'll stay where I am. So as we, you know, as Christians, you know, we should notify our face and let people know that, hey, I am, I'm a happy man. I am happy in Christ. God has been good to me. He saved me. He changed my life. He's given me eternal life. I get to spend eternity with Almighty God. I mean, I mean, all the greatness of His presence and His glory. I get to be with Him forever, and uh, you know, and it's going to be so much fun and excitement. We haven't learned in this whole life all the things that we're going to learn and the capacity that we're going to have to grow and gain from God and all the things that He's going to show us. I mean. We're going to have a glorified body. We're going to be able to do things that we can't possibly even do in this present world. I mean, we saw a little glimpse of what Jesus' body was like when he came back after he was raised from the dead and entered into a room with the windows and doors being shut. We're going to have that same kind of a body where we can do those kind of things. Uh, we're going to we're, we're going to have eternal eternal life. We're not going to we're not going to ever die. We're not going to ever decay. It's just going to be an amazing thing being in him and your, you know, your friends and your uh, comrades who uh, have been going through various tested trials. Don't run from the Lord when you're going through those things. Run to him. Fall down on your face before him and cry out to him and ask for him. Uh, Lord, I need your help. Lord, help me now, you know, and get a scripture. Lord, you said in your word, you know. Glory to God, the greater is he who's in me than he that's in the world. So I believe that. So you're greater in me than this problem that I'm having out here. And mm. if you'll believe that, he'll come to your rescue. You know, that's exactly right. The, the whole book of Hebrews, the whole chapter of Hebrews 11 talks about faith. Um, and, and, and it's really cool to see the heroes of the faith, people like Abel, people like Enoch and, and uh, Noah and Abraham and, and Moses and Sarah and all of these people all of the heroes of scripture that we hear about in the Bible stories, they do what they do because they have faith in God and what God has told them to do. And, and, you know, that's one of the most important things that we can focus on is seeing what has happened when they focus their, their faith on Jesus and, and God, and then doing what they did by putting our faith in God as well. You know, uh, Matthew chapter uh, six, verses 33 and 34 says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient is the day for its own trouble. We need to have faith in God that, that today God will give us what is sufficient, and we need to focus on the kingdom of God and, and seek first his kingdom and his righteousness by faith, through faith. And, you know, one of the things that that my the, the speaker at my Bible study uh, said last night is he asked us a question. And that question is, is my faith inactive because of sin? And, and that that is something that really many Christians have a problem with. Their faith is inactive. Their faith in God is inactive because they are living a life that is filled with sin. And God can't honor that. God won't honor that. And, and we need to get to a point where we're gonna where we're gonna say, God, take my sin from me, and help my unbelief in you. Give me give me faith to trust what you say that you are good and your love is great. Oh God, we all Christians need that. Yes, I I agree. It's very important that we live a life 
free from sin and uh, live a life of sanctification, separated under God for holy, for holy use. We really need that. But what the the best way in the world to get to that place of overcoming sin in your life is to recognize how much Jesus loves you. When you know how much He loves you, and you really understand the price that He paid for you on the cross how he paid all your sins, all your sicknesses, all your diseases, all your pain, all your shame, all your confusion, all those things were put on the cross of Jesus Christ, on his body. It was put on him for you and I. And all those things, and he not, He took all those sins, but what did he do for us? He gave us his very own righteousness. So just because you sin, a lot of people think, well, I've lost my righteousness because I've sinned. No, you don't lose your righteousness because you sin. God said he's not imputing, he's not charging those sins against you anymore. But what you have to do is when you sin, the Bible talks about uh, confessing sin, but I think something that's even more important than confessing sin is having a heart of repentance. And the other thing I think is very important is that we confess who we are in Christ. Confess your righteousness. You have to declare that Jesus declared that you're the righteousness of God before all of heaven the day you got born again. Now that you're born again, your life, your, your body, or your, your spirit has been recreated in righteousness. You, have, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You, you, righteousness is not what you do. Righteousness is who you are. It's what you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. And so declare it. I declare when I sin, when I've sinned, when I've come short, I, I declare, Lord, Lord, I acknowledge that I've sinned. And I can and and I can and I confess my righteousness before you right now. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. And I know I don't feel very righteous right at the moment, Lord. But you you declare that I am. I am the righteousness of God. I declare it right now before you. I declare it before all those who are within the sound of my voice that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm not going to be righteous. I already am the righteousness of God in Christ. Glory to God. And when you mm -hmm. declare your righteousness, glory to God, the peace of God is just going to come over you. Glory to God. And you're going to recognize. So as soon as you sin, you don't wait around and, and try to and, and, uh, you know, and get into a place where you're just all down and out and, and depressed over the fact that you sinned and all those kind of things. No, immediately. When you know you sin, start confessing your righteousness, declaring who you are in Christ naming that you are who God says you are mm -hmm. and uh, d and don't don't move from that don't stray from that declare it believe it with your heart and act on that by faith and when you mm -hmm. do it'll change things because a lot of times people get into a life of sin and they they they, they try all kind of things they try confessing their sin <clears throat> which oftentimes makes them more sin conscious instead of instead of doing the, the thing what you think is going to do you end up being more sin conscious instead of righteousness conscious. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we right. need to do is we need to focus on the fact that we are the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We have the ability to stand in the presence of God <coughs> without any sense of guilt or shame or inferiority, just like we never sinned. You know, that's exactly right. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That, that That's 100% right. You know, the believers have authority over the devil. We have authority over sin. And it's time for the believers to start to start going against the devil with the authority that we have, that the power of the devil is powerless against a believer who uses the power and authority of Jesus that has been given to us. You know, I'm, I'm, I really love the book, the believer's authority by Kenneth Hagin. And it, and it oh, says, in, it says in, in, uh, in, uh, page Powerful. four, thank God we have authority over such evil spirits through Jesus Christ. We need to understand what Paul said here in the light of what he wrote in previous chapters. And he says in Ephesians 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places that our combat is with the devil and should, and, and we should fight that with the consciousness that we have authority over him because the devil is a defeated foe. The Lord Jesus Christ defeated him for us. And, and the problem is believers don't have faith that we have that authority. 
the devil True. doesn't want Christians to learn about the authority that we have. And he's going to do everything that he can to get us to stray from that. He's going to get us to sin. He's going to get us tempted. And we are going to fall away from Christ, uh, 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 fall away from the will of Christ when we're living in that sin, when we're allowing uh, the devil to take stronghold to our life. Page five says authority belongs to us, whether we realize it or not. But just Amen. knowing that isn't enough. It's knowledge acted upon that brings results. We have authority, have the faith to use that authority that you have been given. Amen, brother. <laughs> that's, that's good stuff you're talking there, boy. We need the body of Christ definitely needs to know more about that. Uh, you know, the one of the great stories in the Bible is the story of David and Goliath. And uh, it, we, it's very important that we see how that David used his authority as a covenant child of Almighty God to fight against uh, the lion and the bear. Now, when he comes before King Saul and King Saul sees this little ruddy little youth coming to him saying he's going to he's willing to fight against this giant Philistine. He's like, you got to be kidding me. What are you you, you going to fight him? Don't you know he's been fighting since he was a youth and you're just a you're just a little young youth, handsome little guy. I mean, what do you think you're going to do? Well, uh, David said, when I used to, uh, you know, you know, tend my father's sheep, there was a lion and a bear that rose up against me. He said, I took the bear. I took the uh, sheep out of the lion's mouth, and when he rose up against me, I took him by the beard and 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 killed him. And when the bear, he killed the bear. And so, uh, and he said, then this uncircumcised Philistine is going to be just like one of them. Did you notice? He claimed everything that he was going to do, and he did it based on what he said he was going to do. And then he convinced he uh, he convinced the king. He said, okay. He said. Uh, Go and the Lord be with you. But before he did that, he said, here, put on my armor. <laughs> I think he wanted everybody to think that he was the one doing it. But anyway, <laughs> the thing is, David went before Goliath. He went and got five smooth stones and he had a sling. He said, I can't wear this armor. It hasn't tested. And he went before, he went before the army of the Philistines, grabbed his smooth stones and uh, the Giant comes out just yelling and screaming, "What all? I'm going to I'm going to give your carcass to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field." And David, see, David didn't let the giant have the last word. He said, "No." He said, "You fight. You come against me with sword and spear." He said, "I come. I come against you in the name of the Lord God of hosts, whose army you have defied. This day, I'm going to uh, I'm going to slay you, cut off your head, and going to give the." The carcasses of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the beast of the field. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and just what David said he was going to do is exactly what happened. He went forward. He went forward. He took that smooth stone and he slung it and he hit the, and it sank into that giant's forehead and he fell down forward. David didn't have a sword, so he went and took the sword out of Goliath's sheep and killed him or cut his neck head off with his own sword. But David said, every time Goliath said, David said, we can't run at our giant with our mouth shut. We have to go with our mouth open. We have to be speaking what's true, the word of God. We have to recognize that we are covenant children of a covenant keeping God. And he is going to help us through any situation that we're facing when we rely on the covenant relationship that we have with him. Man, that's, that's so amazing. And, and David acted in faith even before he went before the Philistines, before he went uh, right in front of Goliath. Like you mentioned, he went and fought bears and lions and protected his sheep in faith. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to go and walk in faith, walk by faith, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, one of the things that many people uh, deal with is, is having faith in Christianity as a whole as the whole religion and, and and right now like at the time of the upload of this podcast it's christmas eve and um and jesus was born two thousand years ago and many people have a problem with with believing that but if you look at the history of jesus who jesus was people historians claim that jesus really did did walk this earth that he was a real person that he 
that he really did do the things that he said he does, but many people don't believe in him. Um, you know, I, I love history. I really, really love history. And, and we can fast forward uh, to when Jesus was resurrected from the, from, the, from the grave. And we can look at the extra biblical sources related to Jesus. Uh, people like Thallus, he said that Jesus lived, he was crucified, and there was darkness and earthquake. And Tacitus, he said that Jesus was called the Christ. And, and Bar Serapian says that Jesus was a wise king. The Jews wanted him dead, that, that Jesus' his teachings still remain. And there are multiple other, other extra biblical accounts related to Jesus. Plenty the Younger said followers thought he was God. Talmud said that Jesus was executed the day before the Passover and that Jesus had magical power. And if we look at these, compare them to the Bible, these are people who weren't Christians. They, they, didn't, they didn't believe in the Christian faith. But we can look at what people said about Jesus and look at the Bible and what the Bible says about Jesus. And we can have faith without a doubt, without any, any question, any wonder that Jesus is who he said that he is, that he was born of a virgin, that he did live a perfect life, that he did do the miracles that the Bible says that he did and that he did die. And then three days later, he rose again from the grave, defeating sin, defeating death, defeating the devil once and for all. We can have faith in that by history and through the word of God. I totally agree with you. You know, there has been a great onslaught of uh, confusion from the devil to try to cause people to be lost. So the devil wants to do everything that he can to try to undermine the cross of Calvary and what Jesus did to pay the price for our sins in his own blood. So what does he do? He does everything. And we parents oftentimes join right, buddy up right with them and, uh, and, and promote Santa Claus. And so people are, when they think about Christmas, they think more about Santa Claus than they do about Jesus. So the devil's been trying to cloudy the waters for a long time and make, uh, us look at different things instead of looking at the one who birthday we're celebrating. Uh, you know, there was a true guy named St. Nicholas, of course, years gone by. And, and uh, I think it was the uh, Dutch that not being able to pronounce St. Nicholas in the same way that we do came up, made it sound like Santa Claus instead of St. Nicholas, instead of St. Nicholas. And uh, so over the years, it just kept the, the story just kept expanding and expanding and expanding until now it's become uh a fantasy instead of uh, uh, actual bishop, which St. Nicholas was, who really did go around doing good deeds and giving gifts and things like that. And the story just kind of has been embellished a little bit, oh, actually a great bit, <laughs> you know, over the years. Uh, but <clears throat> the fact of what Christ has done uh, is, uh, is so evident and it's evident in the lives of Christians, it's evident in the lives of people who are still doing the same works that Jesus did uh, in his earthly ministry and the, what the apostles did in their ministry. Uh, people are still going about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God is with them, uh, just as they were with Jesus. Uh, they are still doing uh, these things. People are still being healed in their bodies. People are still being uh, set free from sin. People are still being born of God. Their lives have been changed forever. They have been recreated in righteousness. There are miracles that have happened. Uh, there are so many miracles and signs and wonders that have taken place. Uh, people have to purposely and intentionally deny these things. And when they do happen, they try to confuse people, make them believe, oh, that didn't really happen. You know, that that didn't happen. You know, uh, all these all these television ministers and all these people that are claiming these miracles, they, they didn't really happen. You know, and they'll go and they'll, they'll find uh, something to uh, try to uh, ridicule or accuse or make light of of, of what's going on. Uh, they'll get a, some disgruntled person who went attended the meeting and things like that and try to discredit, you know, the uh, reality of what God is doing. But, you know, the, the thing is, it's, it's, not, it's undeniable uh, that Jesus was born. It's undeniable that he... Uh, lived a sinless life. It's undeniable that 
He uh, fulfilled all the law uh, in his life. He, he fulfilled the complete law. And then he died for all of our sins, having never sinned himself. And he rose from the dead the third day. He ascended on high. He sat down on the mercy seat. And he's ever there making intercession for you and I. You know what? It, it may not look like that uh, the church is winning. It may not look that the, like the Lord is winning in the earth right now. Things look pretty bleak in many places. They look pretty dark. Uh, the, uh, the pandemic, the uh, thing that's going on in the earth right now, uh, it, may, it may not look like it's very good for us. But I want you to know, we, we, we come out on top. We will win in the end. It may not look good, but it, I tell you what, we will win. We will overcome this. And, uh, you know, and the ones who have, have perpetuated these things and those who have joined forces with Satan, uh, they're going to be just like Satan was, cast down from heaven. Glory to God. He was cast down, and he, he will be destroyed. He will be destroyed. He's got, until, when he's got time on earth. He's going to, until his lease is up, he has a right to be here. And uh, until then, we're going to have to deal with them. But you know, greater is he who's in us than he that's in the world. And we've got the ability to overcome him. And so we will overcome him. Uh, we will continue to speak what's true. We will continue to love our neighbor. We'll love our enemy. Do good to them that despitefully use us, persecute us, say all manner of evil against us falsely for his namesake. You know, we don't have to worry about anything, the accusations of the evil one. He, we've been accused by the best, so we don't have to worry about any of those things. We know that the victory is ours, so mm -hmm. glory to God. <laughs> Amen. That's exactly right. I love that, brother. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one thing, and then I'm going to ask a few questions, is that, but first of all, you are going to be tempted to leave your faith if you never activate your faith, if you never live in obedience to God. I see so many people on the internet who have left their faith. They have abandoned Jesus and what they've grown up in because they never really put their faith in Christ. They, they never activated their faith. They never lived in obedience to Christ. So if you live in obedience and live in faith, you're not going to leave your faith because you know without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, that Jesus is who he says he is. Then I have a few questions for you, for my listeners. What does faith look like for you? What have you done in faith this year? What can you do today to focus on Jesus? Is your faith inactive because of sin? What are you worried about? How are you trusting God in that worry? What risky thing can I do in 2022 to activate my faith? And then is there a sin that is that I am entertaining that is distancing me from God? I want you all, listeners, I want you all to go over back, write these things down, and answer them. I want you to answer them honestly and, and see what you can do to change what you are doing for Christ in faith for 2022. And if we were to change what we were doing, and live and walk by faith, then that would be tremendous, not only for you, but for the church as well. Because when we do that in our own lives, it affects the lives of those around us. And that's something that all of us uh, should do. And I'm going to do it myself as well. Amen. Well, you asked quite a few questions there, my friend. I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to uh, remember each and every one of them, but I, I will say this. Uh, no matter what your viewers are going through in their life right now, uh, greater is he who's in them than he that's in the world. I know there are people that are challenged uh, in their walk with God. There are Christians who have been through very difficulty, difficult times uh, from the loss of people to COVID and various other things. There's been a lot of dark things that have been happening in our world. There are people that, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, they, they, they question their faith. They question whether or not, uh, well, is God real? Is, is this really, uh, is this that I'm believing in, that I've been uh, taught? Is this really real? Well, I will assure you that it is real. Uh, and uh, the, the only way to have victory is through Jesus. Look away from the things that you're, that you're looking at and look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look to Jesus. If you'll turn to Jesus, he'll help you. If you'll turn to him, he'll get, he'll strengthen you. He will encourage you in whatever down moment that you're having, whatever it is that you're going through. 
God will send laborers across your path whom you'll receive. God will show, God will do anything up to and including sending angels and, uh, and so on and so forth to your aid. You have angels. Uh, you have angels already. Every child that's born into this world has an angel who looks back to the face of God. And all we have to do is engage those angels. And how do we do that? By the word of God. When you speak the word, it gives the angels the license to move in your behalf. When you speak the word of God, God can move. When you speak the word of God, you give the Holy Spirit access to work in your life. It's very important that we stay filled with the word of God. Stay filled with the love of God. You know, because love, faith works by love, according to Galatians 5, 6. Faith works by love. And if you want to, uh, if you want to operate by faith, you're going to have to operate by love. Kenneth E. Hagin was my spiritual father. And uh, he was known all over the world for walking and living by faith. And for Mark 11, 23 and 24, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, therefore, so what things of you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. He taught that probably, somebody asked him, how, how many times have you, uh, how many messages do you have on Mark 11, 23? He said about 50. <laughs> you know, praise God on those verses. So, I mean, you know, there's no scripture that is exhausted. There's, uh, there's more to know about every one of them. We can keep growing and learning. But Brother Hagen learned and taught and developed in faith. And But the biggest thing about Brother Hagen was he was a man of love. He wouldn't let, he wouldn't say anything negative about anybody. He wouldn't speak, he wouldn't put, there was somebody that did him wrong. He said, but he said, I'm not going to contribute to their downfall. He said, I'm not going to let their, their, what they did to me uh, change my mind and change my course. I'm going to walk with God and do what's right because it's right, not because of what they did to me. I, I recall <laughs> one time a brother, I'm not going to mention his name, but uh, he, he, uh, he was sitting there watching the people giving the offering. And he saw them giving 50s and 20s and, you know, and large bills and so on and so forth. And then uh, and the pastor got up and said, all this is for the minister. All this is for the guest minister. And they gave him $50. <laughs> and so the, 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 the pastor said, yeah, he was ready to confront the, uh, the, uh, the preacher about it. And the, the Lord said, no, don't, don't do that. And he just said to love him. <laughs> he said, I, he wanted to love him. All right. You know, uh, with his fist, but <laughs> anyway, glory to God. He, but he chose to, he chose to go ahead and follow God and, and he stayed in love. And, uh, and there's a lot of stories along those lines where people went and ministered. Uh, I know one brother said he went and ministered and they blessed him with a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> and he said that Dr. Pepper was so precious. He still hasn't opened it to this day. And it's been 40 some <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so praise God. But we, we love walking by faith, keeping your eyes. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.20, my son, attend to my words. Mm -hmm. Keep them before your eyes and in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. If we attend to the word of God, the word of God will attend to us, or God and angels and so on and so forth will attend to us. If we want God to minister to us, then let's minister to him. Let's get into the presence of the Lord. Let's bow down on our faces before him and honor him. Tell him how good he is. Glory to God. Talk about of his goodness. Talk about how much you love him. Praise God. Tell him, glory to God. Or just sit there and wait before him and, and wait until he begins to speak to you. Because that's the most important part of prayer is the listening part of prayer, not the talking part of prayer. If we'll learn to listen when we get into that time with God, learn to lay before him. Get quiet. Let your body, let your mind get quiet before him so God can speak into your life. He will tell you things. He'll show you things to come. He'll prepare your life for your future. He'll give you answers, glory to God, that you've been seeking him for. He will show you things to come. He'll help you to have a word in season for other people. And you'll be able to be a blessing to so many others. But God wants to help each and every one of us. And I don't know if I've answered all or any of your <laughs> questions that you asked, uh, <laughs> Alex, but... Uh, you gave me a mouthful there, but anyway, man. Well, I I couldn't have said any of that better myself. That that was that was truly amazing. And I'm gonna finish with this: that the power of the cross cannot be stopped. 
the power of the cross will not be stopped. So put your that. faith in the power of Christ, the power of God that he has risen from the grave so that he has defeated sin, your shame, your blame. He has defeated death and he has defeated the devil once and, your, once and for all. Put your faith in God and he will do amazing things in your life. Amen. You know, Alex, I, I just appreciate you being such a young man and, and on fire for God. I, I just appreciate you uh, having me on your uh, podcast and being able to talk with you and share the good things of God. I mean, it is such a blessing. And my, I mean, I, I'm, my future is very hopeful because of you. And I, I, thank, I thank God uh, for that. And uh, we're just trusting God and believing God that he's going to do great and mighty things through you. Uh, and, the, and the best is yet to come. Man, thank you so much, Pastor Philip. Thank you so much for being on this episode. Thank you all for listening. God bless you all. Have a great day and goodbye. Goodbye. God I called General Flynn. I said, General Flynn, I feel like God wants us to team up to do a reopen America tour and we get people back to God. And he says, I know. I'm going, you know? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. I wasn't thinking of the Bill of Rights when we did this. I believe America is supposed to be that shining city on the hill, the beacon of freedom. But freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You gotta make sure you cover your whole thing. These vaccines are zero liability. There's so much fake information. It's the David and Goliath thing. Their agenda is not God's agenda. Why will the churches not stand up? I'm trying to save America. I believe we're in the greatest revival in history. So the people have been wanting me to give a tour of my office, where I do my podcast, everything there. And so my brother, Zachary, he's holding my phone right now taking this video and so come on Zachary we're going to show them where my podcast studio is kind of where I do what I do first of all I'm going to ask that you ignore that this is where my siblings play video games when I'm not doing my my thing which is podcasting and and business stuff uh so ignore that we have soundproofing right there uh come over here we have we have this I have no idea why we have this but it's there okay and so we also have books. As you can see, we have a whole library of books. Uh, we have the USS Enterprise uh, from the show Star Trek. It's a wonderful show. Zachary, do you like Star Trek? No. Why do you not like Star Trek? Star Wars is better. That is not an answer. Star <laughs> Trek and Star Wars are both great. Um, and, and all of my listeners can say can quote me on that. We have ASU Sun Devils. My dad was from Arizona, and so... This is a nice little thing. Um, deep state, probably, but I don't care. Let's back, back up. Thank you. So we have more books over here. All of these are kind of fic uh, fiction. All of this is nonfiction over here. Some of it is deep state. Some of it is not. Someone who is not deep state is Nick Vujicic. I think that's how you say his name. He's called the limbless preacher because he has no limbs. I have no idea how he wrote this book, but he did. And so he endorsed Dr. Mark Sherwood for governor. Uh, he loves Jesus. He loves our country. And so I'm happy with that. Right here, right here, um, my uncle paints. And so here's a painting of his. And if you want deep state, uh, not deep state paintings, uh, then reach out to me and I'll reach out to him, see if he can make you a painting. Because uh, he's good at painting. Show that th to them again. Isn't that great? Yes, it is great. So next on. We have where I do my thing. This is where I do my thing. And so I have a camera, I have lighting. Uh, it turns on like that. I have a MAGA hat. You can't go wrong with the Make America Great Again hat with the American flag on the side. Isn't that great? Uh, I have my microphone. I love this microphone. It's super easy to use and everything. Uh, I have my iPad. I have my laptop under these books. And so these books, these are great books that I use. Uh, the Believer's Authority by Kenneth E. Hagan, a uh, great book. It teaches you uh, how to walk and live in the authority that God has given you over the devil. And then the Boom Book by, by my friend Clay Clark. And if you've listened to Clay Clark, he is one of the greatest men you'll ever listen to. He's so smart, such a genius. And so he put his genius into this book, 
how to grow your business, how to grow your thing. And so then finally, I have my Bible. This is the Word of God. This is where we get the revelation from God. And so uh, this is a great thing as well. And that's kind of how my podcast started through through the Word of God. So let's open to a random chapter. Uh, Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. The reason why I do this podcast is because I'm looking out for you. I'm looking out for the listener because I want to show you and teach you how to walk in a godly way, in a godly fashion, without supporting the deep state. And so what we do is we read the Word of God, the King James Version, the New King James Version, um, New American Standard Bible is where I read the Word of God. Over here, uh, we have my business cards. Point the camera at my business cards. We have a lot of them. See them? See them? There's a lot. Okay, so I need to give those out more frequently. Uh, I have my handy dandy pocket knife that I almost never use, but I have it because uh, the Second Amendment exists, and yeah, um, let's see. We have podcast arms. Um, I don't know why I have so many podcast arms, but I do. And so that's about it. So if you want to, oh, ooh, I forgot. Here's this: defund the swamp and refund the kingdom. If you want to defund the swamp and refund the kingdom, go to mypillow.com, and you can use the promo code Stonewall. To get up to 66% off your order, that's promo code STONEWALL. I have a couple governor coins here. Uh, the first interview that I did with the governor of Missouri, he gave me this with the with the back, the black back. And then the second one that he gave me was the bicentennial with the white back. And so that was a cool thing. And uh, And that's about it for my office. That's about it for where I do what I do. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching this episode. God bless you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.